Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to call the hogs as this is the Stingray Show and we are going to touch base with Connor Goodson, who is a beat writer for Arkansas, to see about Sam Pittman going into his fifth season at Arkansas. That completely blew my mind, but that is correct. He's going into his fifth season up there. The pressure is on him. How are the Hogs going to do this year? We will catch up and find out on this edition of the Stingray Show Guys, we've got a lot to cover on the Arkansas Preview Show, so let's get things rocking and rolling. Ooh, pig suey, let's go. Hi, this is Tim Brando with a reminder. Those of you on Tide 100.9, look out. You're about to feel the buzz of Stingray. This is Stephen Ray, a.k.a. Stingray. Coming to you live from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I'm Heath Hopkins. I'm here in DeSoto County, Mississippi, right outside of Memphis, Tennessee. You know, Mark, I, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you feel that responsibility to pay it forward and give some kid a chance coming up in the ranks kind of like Tony did for you? Why do you think I'm talking to Stingray tonight? <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate no, that. No, I mean, look, no. Hey, Stingray, mm-hmm. here's the deal. When you get involved with Texas, it's like getting married to a stripper. <laughs> and, and let me explain this. It looks good. It's kind of sexy on, on the surface. Yeah. But then you get the baggage. You get the drama. You get all that eventually comes with it. And that's what you get with Texas, and that's what the Big 12 learned. And Heath, any thoughts on our show moving forward? Hey, to everyone in Tuscaloosa listening here on Tide 100.9, with the Stingray Show, if you don't like it, you better learn to love it, because it's the best show going today, baby. Woo! Welcome back inside the Stingray Show. Hope all is well with you. And now it is really time to call the hogs up there in Fayetteville, Arkansas, as we are about to do our preview of Arkansas, as we are about to bring on our good friend, Connor Goodson. Connor, how in the world are things going up there in Fayetteville? And can you believe it? Now, this shocked me a little bit. Sam Pittman is going into year number five wow. at Arkansas. That blows my mind. Yeah, it, it feels like just yesterday, you know, he was he was hired ahead of the 2020 season, which was a weird time. I think that's kind of played into it doesn't feel that long. Um, um, and it, it's hard to believe that it's year five, but um, it's definitely the most pivotal year of his entire tenure at Arkansas. Um, there's no question about that. Ar- Arkansas's got to have some improvement. They've got to win more games than last year. Um, and that's really all the fans are caring about right now is that they need to see some improvement in the win column. Connor, my question is kind of about the culture and the attitude and everything there on campus and in the athletic department. Look, John Calipari's killing it. Uh, he had a great week uh, recruiting. Kentucky fans are mm-hmm. upset. And so if you know Kentucky fans are upset about Arkansas recruiting, especially with John Calipari, it's it's been a great week for Arkansas. But with all that, we hear that Calipari has this astronomical $12 million in NIL to work with in basketball. How is that? And I don't know if that's true or not, but how is that feeding over to the football program who was trying to get off the mat? Is it one of those things like, yeah, we're just going to finish out the season with Sam, and then we're going to make a change. I mean, I don't. What's the what's the mood there up on the hill? I, I think the mood is that the the Calipari thing really showed people that um, if you want to see change on the football field, on the basketball court, you can. It, it's possible if you have guys like Tyson, like you know the WalMarts of the world, the JB Hunts, if they really want to put their money behind. A program they can see some significant change and they can change the trajectory of a certain program and i don't think it's you know a coincidence that now Pittman last year um if you look at his press conferences the background behind him had like uams and farm bureau well this year there's a big tyson's food logo right mm-hmm. behind him in his press conferences and it's the same with the basketball media and so i think that's just you know kind of it's on everyone's mind that it's like, hey, we it's obvious that we have the funding up here that if we need to make a change, we can make a seismic shift with the football program. But mm-hmm. it's also, you know, 
it costs a lot more money to fund football. You know, yeah. paying NIL out for 15 kids on a basketball roster is different than, you know, um, an 85 man roster for, you know, football. So right. it, it is a lot more expensive. You're going to have to have a, a big swing, a bigger stick to, to you know, really healthily fund um, uh, an NIL program for football. But I think that that's the Calipari move showed people that it's possible at Arkansas. They do have um, significant funding behind them. Um, if, if people want to step up and do it. And I think that that's kind of added to the pressure this year with Sam Pittman. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a, you know, a little bit of a metaphor, you know, he's feeling that pressure. The Tyson's logo is behind him. It's like, if they want to make a change, there's certainly people up here that have money that could actually do that at the end of the year. Oh, we, yeah, we know. I mean, there's oil money, there's Walmart money, there's chicken money, there's logistic yeah. money. There's a lot of big money in, in Arkansas. Most in, uh, most of the SEC schools, uh, minus Texas. But with all of that, um, you know, you were talking about Sam Pittman. Do you think his program and his football team feel the added pressure just because of John Calipari coming in and that clout, that name, that recruiting, that that buzz? It, is there added pressure? Or is it just one of those things like, hey, finally people are seeing what we need? Or is it both? I, I don't I don't I don't know if Pittman necessarily feels that pressure of Calipari, okay. but I do think that the presence of Calipari just kind of elevates across the board. It elevates Arkansas athletics. I mean, you're seeing yes, Arkansas get mentioned on places. I remember when their first report came out, um, ESPN, I was driving up to Fayetteville. They did a whole 30 minute segment just on Arkansas and Calipari and the move on national ESPN radio. So it was like, it was just different. We, before that, I mean, Arkansas was kind of an afterthought nationally and, so with uh, with Calipari, he's just going to elevate that brand, and I think with that comes a little bit of pressure. I don't know if Pittman and the team are necessarily feeling that, but I think they're definitely going to have a little bit more of a spotlight on them just because you know Calipari is associated with, with that hog logo now, and so naturally that's going to get more eyeballs on football. And hopefully that, you know, that attention brings more revenue that you know, football can use, and then if Pittman is uh, – Pittman's successful. We'll see an uptick in recruit, recruiting and, and whatnot. So, Connor, I do want to ask you, because a big transfer happened in the offseason, the regular signal, signal caller for Arkansas, K.J. Jefferson, jumped in the transfer portal. He is now with Gus Malzahn at Central Florida. Talk about his departure and what you know about why he decided to leave Arkansas. Good question, Stephen. Yeah, that's a really good question. And um, look, it's going to be different. It's the first time that Arkansas has had a new quarterback since yes. uh, 2020. Felipe Franks was the last quarterback that wow. wasn't named KJ Jefferson that started uh, for Arkansas. So he's basically, he's been a cornerstone of Sam Pittman's tenure. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, he, he moved on at the end of the season. I think last year you could kind of see that KJ maybe had checked out a little bit, you know, just with yeah. everything going. I mean, he was taking some unnecessary shots with mm -hmm. how bad the offensive line played. And I could, you could just tell halfway through the season, his body language, he never really just, you know, looked into it and he looked over right. it. And I think at, you get to a certain point when there's so much pressure and you're not living up to expectations as a team and Jefferson was looked at as a leader. So, yes. you know, some of that responsibility falls on his shoulders. And I think that, you know, at the end of the day, it was just time to move on. Uh, it, you know, you need to, you need to see greener pastures, you know, you need right. to, um, they just needed a new leadership. They needed to go in different directions. It, KJ Jefferson, one of the best quarterbacks in Arkansas history. I think um, the records speak for themselves, what he was able to do. Um, the wins, maybe not there with some of the other greats, but I think that looking back on this tenure, um, he did a lot of good things, and I think fans are going to appreciate him for that. And, Connor, a quick follow-up to that. He played his heart out in the loss in Tuscaloosa to Alabama, and it seemed mm -hmm. like after they lost that game, he was not the same for the remainder of the season. Yeah, that, that was the – I felt like that was kind of the turning point because yep. leading up to that, Arkansas mm -hmm. had close losses to LSU, and then they had a close loss, one possession game to Ole Miss, both mm -hmm. on the road. And then, um, you know, you go to Tuscaloosa and you lose a heartbreaker. It was the – they still haven't beaten Alabama yep. since Saban took over. 
And I think that getting that close and having it kind of fall apart, it was uh, it was just kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. And you could see a yeah. seismic shift with the team's attitude at, at that point in the season. And I think there was kind of that murmur, that whisper that, like, you know, KJ is probably moving on. He's never really the vocal leader where he was going to, you know, hang out with guys. He wasn't – he was lead by example kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you need that vocal voice, that more mm-hmm. outgoing, extroverted guy who's going to, you know, go to each individual guy, you know, do stuff off the field and kind of be that type of leader. And I, and I think that that's just where Arkansas needed a different voice and they needed a different guy under center. And um, the perfect opportunity to do that was when you right. made a shift with Bobby Petrino. So, Connor, a quick follow-up. Taylor Green from Boise State comes in. Talk about the offense around Taylor Green this season, please. Well, yeah, so Bobby Petrino handpicked Taylor Green as his quarterback. You know, when, when he was hired in November, Sam Pittman said, hey, you go get your guy. Um, my, you know, Taylor Green has a previous relationship. Bobby Petrino, when he was head coach at M- Missouri State, actually mm-hmm. offered – Taylor Green out of high school, but uh, Taylor went to Boise State and toured up in the Mountain West last year. I'm really excited to see what he can do. Obviously, there's issues with his consistency as a passer, but man, how about this? I, I don't know if y'all watched much Taylor Green, but um, he reminds me a lot when he gets running in the open field of Matt Jones. That, <laughs> that I mean, it, Matt Jones was one of my favorite players watching because Absolutely. you just knew. I mean, he was the definition of making something out of nothing. That that long stride and and it's and those white cleats. Quince- yes, <laughs> he looked that, slow. With those I mean, light, white cleats and long strides. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, he and it's no, it's not a coincidence that some of the most successful seasons Arkansas ever had and some of the biggest moments you know they had with Matt Jones at quarterback. So I think having that um, at quarterback this year is, you know, it. it it's going to add a different dimension with Bobby Petrino. You're going to look at look more like how things were with him at uh, Louisville with Lamar Jackson, right. not saying that Taylor Green's anywhere near Lamar Jackson, but uh, I think you're going to have to lean into that kind of playbook, that kind of uh, play calling style. And Bobby Petrino even mentioned it during the spring that that's kind of how they're going to have to mold the offense around just because Taylor Green is so deadly with his legs and um, his speed is, I mean, the strides that he takes, he looks like he's it's moving effortlessly, but he's like, you know, picking up five yards a stride almost. It, it's just mm-hmm. impressive. And um, we really haven't seen him be able to uh, see what he can do in full contact, you know, a live period because throughout offseason, you know, quarterbacks get protected and they're not taking hits and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see the first few games, you know, what it's like having him, you know, full go and letting him loose completely. So, but uh, there's a lot of excitement with Taylor Green coming in this year. So, Connor, hold that thought because we were up against another break. And when we come back, we are going to dive into the running backs, the wide receivers, and then talk about the defense and the schedule. That's all ahead on this edition of the Stingray Show, the Arkansas Preview Show. Are you guys craving some mouth-watering catfish? Then let me tell you about the catfish that Coker Market serves. Now, there are two ways that you can get your catfish at the Coker Market. You can get a fried catfish sandwich with a grilled bun and tartar sauce, or you can get the catfish strips plate with two sides. That's at the Coker Market in Coker, Alabama at the four-way intersection right there off of County Road 140. Go by the Coker Market today and get some amazing catfish, the best in Tuscaloosa County. Welcome back, SEC fans. You're listening to Todd 100.9. This is the Stingray Show. I'm Heath Hopkins, along with me is Stingray, Stephen Ray. And right now we got Connor Goodson, who covers the Arkansas Razorbacks. He's on that beat. He knows all things in and out about the Razorback program. Connor, one thing I wanted to ask you, right before we went to break, Bobby Petrino's name came back, uh, came up. He's back up there, up on the hill. I love it when Arkansas fans say up on the hill. But... Uh, he, he's, he's back up on the hill. Immediately, the first thing that went through my mind is, 
I wonder if some of the old money, some of the big brass there at Arkansas wanted to bring Petrino back in because if things go south or things don't look good early, they might want to make a change. And, oh, here's Bobby Petrino back here again. That was the first thing that went through my mind. Do you think that has anything into play? Because I immediately felt sorry for Sam Pittman. I was like, did Sam want him? I mean, I'm sure Sam had to want somebody and was probably excited, but was he kind of like, hey, this guy's coming for my job, or they're going to throw me out the window after the first fumble in the first quarter? I mean, what, yeah. what do you see that whole situation? I, I don't think you're wrong in, in thinking that, and I think that, that that thought crossed the minds of a lot of Razorback fans. I know it crossed my mind initially. There's definitely – I remember when Bobby was first hired, they took him to a basketball game, and um, Sam, he's sitting up there in the box with Sam Pittman, and, you know, the student section starts chanting Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. So oh, wow. it, it's a, it's the you know that dynamic's probably a little weird and it was probably a little awkward at first. But you know they've both said the said all the right things. I think that truly Sam Pittman saw that Bobby Petrino is a genius when it comes to offense. He's got a brilliant offensive mind. He knows how to win at a high level, and that the opportunity for Bobby to come back and really rewrite the final chapter of his Arkansas tenure that he really that meant something to Bobby and so I think you know Sam Pittman he's obviously in the market for an offensive coordinator and so why not get a guy who has um, experience at Arkansas knows Arkansas mm -hmm. will be motivated to really you know rewrite his final chapter here and really just I mean Bobby w wants to win he wants to win more than anyone and he's also yeah. got a plethora of head coaching experience um, and so Sam Pittman with his, I mean, it's his fifth year at Arkansas. It's also his fifth year of being a head coach and leading a program. Mm -hmm. uh, so he needs all the head coaching experience and, and, and all of that, you know, knowledge and um, advice. He needs all of that around him. I mean, it, it's no surprise that Kendall Browse and Barry Odom, two guys who had head coaching experience, were his first two coordinators, and they saw more success when he had those kind of guys around him. So I think looking at all those factors, I think Sam Pittman thought it was a no-brainer, and – I don't know if it was so much behind the scenes where it was something nefarious where it was like, well, we could have a head coach in waiting. Um, I think <laughs> there's probably a good chance you see Travis Williams. If things did go south, I, th I think the people behind the scenes would much rather see Travis Williams, the defensive coordinator, be in, in, in an interim spot or, or something like that before Bobby. But, I mean, who knows? I think that that's just something we'll have to find out if it gets to that point. Hopefully it doesn't. I know all our Arkansas fans are hoping that it doesn't get to that point. I know, I know I would just love to see them come out and win eight games. And, you know, I'm really – this is where I'm at. I want to see where this thing goes. You've got Travis Williams, who's an aggressive young defensive coordinator. you got Bobby Petrino, who's an aggressive, older, experienced offensive coordinator. And both of these guys with Sam Pittman as kind of the head coach, that CEO type coach – I think that it could really be successful, but you really don't have the time to really experiment with that and give them a, enough runway. You've got to see that through right now. You've got to see success right now. And so mm -hmm. um, it, it, that's one. Of, that's going to be an interesting dynamic to watch, and, and I'm excited to, to see how it plays. But uh, I think Sam Pittman was kind of the one that got the Bobby of conversations going. I think he made that decision um, more than people behind the scenes. I think it could be a recipe for huge success. I do. Uh, it's just, it, is it going to be success right away? Or is it one of those things that right. takes two or three years and you don't have two or three years to see if it's going to work? Uh, oh, yeah. that, that's the, that's the million dollar question right now or $11 million question. <laughs> so Connor moving to another position in 2022, Arkansas had one of the best running backs in the country Rocket Sanders. Rocket has obviously moved on to South Carolina. Connor, what does the running back room look like up there for Arkansas? Because Arkansas had a big trouble last year running the football. Yeah, definitely running the football was a, a huge issue last year. Rocket Sanders really he, he got injured the first game against Western Carolina and was never really himself. The, the offensive line issues played a big role in Arkansas not being able to to run the run the football, but um, you know Rocket Sanders not really being healthy. There was a lot of you know them just trying to find you know 
anyone that could could run the ball successfully. There there was a like running back by committee with like Rashad DeBinion and, and Isaiah uh, Augusta and, and guys like that. And Rashad DeBinion's really the only experienced guy that they have uh, coming back returning. Uh, they did go out and get Jaquindon Jackson from Utah, who I think is going to be a he, he has the chance to really be a stud and, and one of the better backs in the SEC. If that offensive line can can do what we think that they're capable of doing, uh, I think you'll really see Jaquinda Jackson um, show out. And one thing, listening to him, it sounds like I mean he he was one of the better backs at Utah during his Utah career, and last year battled an ankle injury, and that saw a dip in his production. And I think that a lot of people started to write him off because he was battling with an ankle injury. So like right. listening to him during spring practice is i mean he's talking like a guy like a freshman coming in like saying that I, you know I'm, i need to you know earn everything that mm-hmm. everything and and i really got to you know prove my doubters wrong prove my haters wrong and, and that type of mentality and so i think you're going to see a hungry quinton jackson running you've got rashad debenian who's a little bit more of a quicker receiving back you i think you're going to see a lot um bobby Petrino, his first center in arkansas we saw him utilize those wheel routes um uh, the game yeah. against Alabama in 2010, that first play, uh, that first touchdown uh, is one of the you know more memorable moments in Arkansas history. It hit Ronnie Wingo on a wheel route to score, and the in Fayetteville just went insane. And I think that's the loudest. A lot of people say it's the loudest that Fayetteville's ever been. Mm-hmm. So I think you're going to see a lot of that with Rashad DeBinion out of the backfield. Um, you've got the freshman from Benton, which is uh, where I graduated high school, um, but. Braylon Russell, who uh, committed to Arkansas, coming in. I mean, that dude is a is a freak athlete. He looks like a defensive lineman the way he's built. I mean, he's got tree trunks for thighs. Uh, he is really – he's inexperienced, but, I mean, I think you'll see him in, in short-yarded situations, and I think he's definitely someone that, they, that could help them in that running back room. But uh, I think that will be a position group of strength for the Razorbacks this year. So, Connor, moving to another position on offense, what about the pass catchers? What can we expect from that wide receiving core? Yeah, you've got Andrew Armstrong is really the leader of that group. Uh, uh, he's in his second season. Uh, he transferred from Texas A&M Commerce before last year. Uh, didn't really – I mean, the offense, you can't really look too hard into their stats from last year because you've got guys like uh, – um, Andrew Armstrong, who I think are better than what their stats showed last year, but he was the leading receiver uh, for Arkansas. He's kind of that, like I said, that unsung or that that leader of that group. Then you've got Tyrone Broden, who is six seven and probably one of the faster guys on the on the team. He can run twenty two. I think Arkansas has eleven guys this season that can run at least twenty two miles an hour. Uh, it's up wow. from four mm. last year, and Tyrone Broden is six seven, and he was one of those guys that can hit twenty two miles an hour. So that's just insane speed. Yesterday, uh, day one of fall camp, he had an insane one-handed grab. It looked like it was about to be an overthrow. Uh, defensive back Jalen Braxton was in perfect coverage, but T- Tyron Broden snatched it with one hand and took it for a touchdown. And it was probably going to be the, the catch of fall camp. But we've got those two. Isaiah Satania, speedster, um, who is really, uh, I think, is going to, really surprised some folks with, with what he can do in Bobby's offense. And then you've got the tight end Luke has, who was really starting to come into his own as a true freshman last season before he broke his clavicle um, against mm. Texas A&M. So I think you're going to see him with Bobby Petrino's, you know, using tight ends in his offense. I think Luke has, has a really good chance to be one of the best, uh, best pass catchers on this team this year. So, Connor, we are up against our final break, and when we come back, we are going to switch sides to the other side of the football, talk about the defense, and look ahead to that schedule for Arkansas. You're listening to the Stingray Show. We will be right back to finish up the Arkansas Preview Show. Are you in need of planning for retirement? Stiefel specializes in helping investors like you in your quest to build and manage your wealth. And when the time comes, pass it along to future generations. Stiefel can help you plan for retirement, save for college, give to your favorite charity, or leave a legacy for your heirs. Stiefel can be contacted at 205-414-3375. Once again, that is 205-414-3375. 
3375 and their office is located off of Shades Creek Parkway in Birmingham, Alabama. Stiefel Incorporated member SIPC and NYSE. Welcome back inside of our final segment right here on the Stingray Show. We are calling the Hogs this evening as we are doing our Arkansas preview show. And before we do get to the defense, Heath had one more question about the offense. So, Heath, finish up with the offense, then we'll get to the defense. All right. I appreciate that, Stingray. You know, Looking at this offense, Connor, who's one player on offense and defense that Arkansas just can't afford to lose this season? I th- I think, I mean, obviously quarterback's the most important position, and I think if, if Taylor Green is the, is the guy, you can't really lose him. I, I know they're really excited about Malachi Singleton, the backup, and K.J. Jackson, the young guy. Um, behind Taylor Green, but really you can't afford to lose your your starting your starting quarterback if he's the guy. He's Taylor Green stepped up as that leader um, of the offense, and so you really can't afford to to lose that leader going forward. Um, but on the defensive side of the ball, it's it's easily probably Landon Jackson. Mm-hmm. He's the de facto leader, the defensive end. He's one of the most experienced guys here. He's a physical freak of nature. The guy that I think that they can't really afford to lose. He's he's their on field as a defensive end. He, he's still kind of their on field leader, um, mm-hmm. and so I think he's really important to how that defense goes. All right, so let's transition to the defense right there, Connor. Going ahead and give us your thoughts on how this defense will look under, like you called, a very feisty and young defensive coordinator. Yeah, so I think last year, the the first half of the season, you saw an Arkansas defense that was one of the better ones that Sam Pittman's ever fielded uh, in his tenure. And honestly, going back to even the Bobby Petrino days, it was one of the better defenses that we had seen just from how they were turn- forcing turnovers, they were getting to the quarterback, um, it was just one of those cases of the offense really isn't helping them out. They would, they would flip the field, give them, give the offense great field position, and they wouldn't be able to do anything. And you think four quarters, you get to the end of the fourth quarter, that weighs on a defense a little bit mentally and, and obviously physically. And then at the end of the season, you, you just saw the whole team kind of let go of the rope, and, and that was one of the big issues. But I think the defense, if it can be similar or even just slightly better, I think that this defense will, will be one of, at least in the top half of the, the SEC, that there is a couple of key spots that, you know, you're looking at it. There's some issues. This fall camp is going to be important to finding, finding guys in that two and three deep who can, who can really contribute. You always know with the gauntlet of the SEC schedule, there's going to be injuries later, and, and you're going to be relying on guys who are maybe a little unproven or younger inexperienced. So I, I think that going into fall camp, that's one of the big things that this team is really looking at is, is who, who in that two and three deep can help me because they, they've got some studs across that defense with, uh, you know, like I said, Landon Jackson, they've got a really experienced front four with Eric Gregory, Campbell, and Nico, Nico Davier. Uh, but again, behind that, there's not much depth on the defensive line. And then you've got, uh, then you've got the linebacking core, which uh, Arkansas lost four, guys the transfer portal uh Pooh Paul went to Ole Miss you've got Jaheim Thomas transferred to Wisconsin um, Jordan Crook transferred to Arizona State and then you've got a couple guys that lost eligibility so they had to really rebuild that linebacking core and with Travis Williams that's kind of his background uh, he played linebacker at Auburn and uh, spent a lot of time coaching linebackers there under Gus Malzahn and so he's kind of really taken that and really it's been an emphasis of his all throughout spring and then now fall um, so they're really confident in Xavier Sori, the transfer from Georgia, who was a former five-star recruit. And then you've got Brad Spence, who they're really, really high on, who was a true freshman last year. He had like a pick six against Western Carolina in the first game of the season. Uh, but those two are going to be your kind of leaders. Um, I know Landon Jackson was the de facto leader just because of his experience, but on field, talking from like, you know, communications and kind of being the quarterback of the defense, that's where Sori and Spence are really going to come in in, in clutch and, 
And then the secondary, you've got guys like Jalen Braxton, who had great coverage on Tyron Broden yesterday, but, you know, just a freak catch by Broden, but he's going to be one of the better defensive backs, I think. And um, it's just about finding depth in, in those spots. You don't really have a lot of, a lot of, you know, in that two and three deep, a lot of proven experienced season guys. So there's a lot of question marks if, when you get have to rely on those guys. But um, with, with Travis Williams also, I think that this year you're going to see him um, be a, a lot more aggressive because Sam Pittman during his media day said that he, he admitted that he was holding him back a little bit with his play calling and stuff last year. Travis Williams must, he, I mean, like I said, he's aggressive. He's going to do a lot of cover zero. He's going to blitz and he's going to, you know, do things that not a lot of other defensive coordinators are probably comfortable doing. And last year, I think you saw Sam Pippen being a little cautious and conservative, whereas this year you'll see a lot more risk risk taking. And, and hopefully, I, th- I think it'll pay off, but, you know, to be determined. So, Connor, we have talked about the X's and O's. Now let's look at the schedule. The non-conference for Arkansas. Arkansas Pine Bluff to start off the season on a Thursday night, then at Oklahoma State, UAB, and then, of course, they follow up with Louisiana Tech and late in the season before they play Missouri. Give us your thoughts on that schedule and especially that early non-conference game at Oklahoma State. I think that Oklahoma State game is is pivotal. Uh, I think that's going to tell us a lot about how how this season goes and, and kind of what the ceiling is for the season. Because if you if you think about it, uh, they're, they're going to take they should take care of business against UAPB in that yeah. first game. And then, I mean, a- after that, you think if they if they lose the last couple of years, it's been close losses, you know, and not let and they've let close losses, you know, beat them the next week and the week after that. And so if they lose a close game against Oklahoma State or, or, you know, it's I think it's going to be tough to see them getting, you know, more than six wins. It's going to be tough for me to see them getting two six wins if, if they can't yeah. go on the road and beat Oklahoma State. Um, and then the, the week after against UAB is, I yeah. mean, it's no it's no it's not going to be a cakewalk. I know Trent Dilford's done some good things down there. Um, Alex Mortensen, the former Arkansas quarterback, is their offensive coordinator. And so I know he's going to be, you know, a little geared up to to call um, call plays in his former uh, former university. So that that game's not going to be as as much of a toss up as what or a cakewalk as what people think. And then I mean, they start the season off their five first their first five games are in five different venues. I mean, yeah. they're playing in Little Rock for their opener, and then they play at Oklahoma State, and they play um, UAB at their home field in Fayetteville. And they you, they go to Auburn and then A and M and in Dallas and their first true SEC home game is not until Tennessee October. Yeah. Um, so it's like I, it's tough. It, it's going to be hard, I think, if if they don't win against Oklahoma State for me to see this season really being what it should be. I, I think that that Oklahoma State game is going to be important. But um, man, going forward, they need. <laughs> I, th- I think that they need to do a much better job. Obviously, the Texas A&M game coming back to home and home series or on yeah. campus series after this year, um, that'll that'll help. But man, playing five different five, your first five games at five different venues that's that's yes. a tall task, and and, and that, that could mentally weigh on a on a team if they're not ready for it. So um, navigating that first first five games is going to be really, really important, especially the Oklahoma State game. That I think that's going to tell us a lot about this Arkansas team. Oh, yes. The pressure is on Sam Pittman. And hello, listen to this SEC schedule at Auburn, Texas A&M, Tennessee, LSU, at Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Texas, and at Missouri. Oh, that's mm. brutal. That is brutal. Yeah. When it was released, I think fans were like, well, at least we don't play Bama. At least we don't play Georgia. But it's like, I mean, it's still a gauntlet, <laughs> man. I mean, Texas Texas isn't a cakewalk. You know, I mean, yeah. Ole Miss is going to be one of the top teams in the country, most likely. Um, I mean, and then Tennessee, LSU, I mean, the usual suspects. No game in the SEC is easy. And, right. and it's like Arkansas – that, like I said, playing those first five games at different venues, they really didn't do themselves much of a favor in terms of like getting momentum going. And I think right. that's a big important thing that 
is overlooked a lot. You've got to get momentum in those early in early in the season that can kind of carry you um, through the back half when it's when it's a grind. Missouri, I mean, they're, they're a perfect example. Last year, they they kind of got some momentum going early, and it carried them to an 11 win season. And with, I mean, I know fans don't really like to see that many cupcakes on the schedule, but you know, it's something to be said about getting confidence and and feeling better, and you know, maybe winning a couple games that you're not supposed to win after after being confident and showing that you can do it. And so, I think that uh, Arkansas really didn't do themselves any favors with this schedule, and. Um, right. But certainly, if they can navigate that first brutal stretch, then I think that they they can do something special. But uh, man, it's definitely tough. And Sam Pittman really did not need a really tough schedule this year if he wanted to save his job. But he's got his work cut out for him. That's that's for sure. So Connor, look, man, thank you as always for joining us. Have a wonderful August covering the preseason camp there for Arkansas. And we will catch up with you during the season to get your take on all things Hogs related. Sound, sounds good, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for having me. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to jump on with you all. And I hopefully look forward to talking about some uh, Arkansas shocking, shocking some teams in the, in the fall. Yes. I think we might. I think we just might. All right, so Heath, that is going to wrap up another edition of the Stingray Show. This, of course, was the Arkansas preview show. When we come back tomorrow evening, we are going to be catching up with Nick Roush of Kentucky Sports Radio to get his take on the longest tenured coach now in the SEC, Mark Stoops and the Kentucky Wildcats. That is on the Friday evening edition of the Stingray Show. Heath, we've got about 30 seconds or less. Any final words on Arkansas? Man, young defensive coordinator, very old season, veteran at OC, and you got a head coach that's passionate. Steven, they, the recipe is there. It's just like barbecue, your favorite barbecue restaurant. Sometimes you just get bad pork, and no matter how you season it and cook it, it's still not good. Right. I don't know how that's going to play with the Razorbacks. And no pun on pork and Razorbacks, but I don't know how this is going to play out. I think it's a recipe for success, but man, you might just have some bad barbecue and it just it's not yes. going to cook right, man. So Heath, we don't often do this, but I think we should to give Arkansas a little bit of luck going into this season. Let's end the Arkansas preview show with both of us calling the hogs, man. Steven, this is not in my contract. Um, <laughs> I, I have very specific things in my contract. There is no brown M&Ms in my M&M box, and it says nothing that I have to call the hogs. Okay, well, I'll do it for you then. <laughs> Go for it. Pig suey! Arkansas Razorbacks, good luck to you guys this year. And the Stingray Show is out. We will catch you on the Friday evening edition. Very nicely done, Stingray. Man, we have more fun than anybody else on the radio. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Woo pig. <laughs>